This is my iPhone 8. I recently purchased this iPhone 15 Pro to replace it. I do miss the fingerprint touch ID, but that's not the purpose of this video. I purchased this phone for its camera and the USB-C port that allows external devices to connect to this iPhone like never before. Now I can record videos straight off of the iPhone to an SSD drive. I can also use it as a live camera input in our video switcher. Welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. My name is Nathan. I train and educate leaders to do church and event production with excellence. So here are ways that I've discovered that I can use my iPhone 15 Pro, which has forever changed the way I think about an iPhone. Or any phone, really. The Android users will really tell you that theirs are better. That's not the point of the video either. So let's talk about the USB-C port that allows any USB converter to be used with the iPhone. So here is my USB-C to HDMI adapter, and this gives me video output of the iPhone. I'll just go ahead and connect it here. And this is so cool because we can connect our iPhone to a TV. You can see it pop up here on my multi-view. I'm connecting it to here in the studio. There it is. Oh, orientation's wrong. Oh, there we go. So you can see I'm filming the input with the camera, but if I zoom out, you can just see it if I put that camera in program. So anyways, you can see here and you can easily use your iPhone to connect it to your TV to show videos or pictures to a group of people, maybe just in your living room. Such a simple use case for this iPhone, but an even more complex use case for this phone is doing what I'm doing here and connecting your phone to an ATEM switcher or some kind of video switcher and using it as a live camera during your broadcast. So a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday, we did this. We put my phone on a little tripod by the piano. I used the Decimator uh, HDMI to SDI converter and I ran it into the video switcher. And this was so cool. Here's some footage of us using it for that broadcast. These clips with the lyrics in the lower thirds were pulled from the live stream. And this is also what I'm doing here in my studio. I am currently have my phone connected to the ATEM switcher. You can see the multi-view right there. And I'm recording all of the inputs from the few different cameras with the ISO feature recording to an SSD drive through my ATEM switcher. So the company Blackmagic has released an app for the iPhone. It's called Blackmagic Cam. Okay, so let me go ahead and open this. You can see my screen, so I can just show you me opening it. How cool is that? This app is so cool. And one of the things that it does is it gives you total control of your phone's camera, including focus, and it even offers clean HDMI out, which is why when you look at me, you're not seeing any of the other stuff on the screen that we were looking at a minute ago, the camera, the settings, the record button, because this is a clean HDMI out. I'm gonna go to monitor, I'm gonna go to HDMI out, and I'm gonna go to clean feed. I'll show you this in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and mirror it. Okay, cool. So what I just did right there is I just went to settings, I went to monitor, I went to HDMI out right there, see that? And I clicked on it and then I changed it from clean feed to mirrored feed. So now going into my ATEM switcher, you can see all of the settings just like before. Okay, so I was just thinking that, wow, I look really bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the white balance. Oh, that looks a lot better. Cool. Oh. I'm not gonna go crazy with these settings just because I wanna make a point to show you that this is crazy. Also, did I mention that Apple Log HDR and time-lapse are available through this app? Oh, wait a minute. Time-lapse was available through the other app. Oh, but the one thing that wasn't available through the other app is the ability to connect an SSD drive and record from the phone straight to the SSD drive. More on the use cases of the app and the SSD drives later on. So I'm excited to upgrade my MacBook webcam. My motto here, potato to professional. I think I'm gonna get a t-shirt with my crazy amazing designs logo on it, potato to professional. So I was editing this video and I nearly about died of laughter. I went into ChatGPT and I asked it to generate me an image, okay? Here's what I said. I said, design me a logo, potato to professional. The idea is that potato quality video looks bad and we want professional quality looking video. So this is the graphic it generated for me. I nearly fell out of my seat laughing. Isn't that the funniest thing you've ever seen? Like maybe ever. <laughs> I do a lot of Zoom meetings with all of you who wanna learn more about ProPresenter or the M32X32 mixers or live streaming. And let's be honest, my MacBook camera is not the most amazing thing. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. 
So this is maybe what you've seen, this potato quality, if you've joined me for one of my Zoom training calls. And I don't usually do calls here in my studio where the lighting is at least nice, but I do try to make sure that the image at least looks good for my Zoom calls. That's why I love that I can use my iPhone as a webcam in these calls. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go down to the bottom left where it says stop video, and I'm gonna click on the up, and that's gonna allow me to change what camera I'm using. And we're gonna go ahead and use my iPhone as a webcam for these calls. So when your iPhone and Mac computers are both connected on the same Wi-Fi and they're connected with the same Apple ID, you're gonna be able to select your iPhone from this list. So look here, Nathan iPhone camera. Look at this, that's a great look. Hey, look, hey, there's me. I do look better through my iPhone as my camera, as my streaming camera, and this is super easy to connect to, and it uses your iPhone camera from your computer. So this is our first big boost in quality from potato to professional video. When you're ready to go one step further or switch from your iPhone to using any camera with an HDMI out, here is your next upgrade. I have this Blackmagic Recorder 3G and I'm gonna plug it into my computer. Now my HDMI cable is here. I'm gonna plug that into this device and then I'll plug my iPhone into this device. So this setup does require some software to be running on your computer to make it work. So you're going to have to uh, download that and if you have questions about that, I have a video that I went over that so I'll link that in the cards up top. Okay, so now that our Recorder 3G is connected to our computer and my iPhone is connected to the Recorder 3G, I'm gonna go ahead to the bottom left and again, I'm going to select this external capture card. So just like I selected my phone before, now I'm gonna pull from this capture card. So the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Recorder 3G, click on that and then that should pop up a feed from my phone. So I'll go back to the uh, Blackmagic app and I'll go ahead and start video. And now we can see it. I'll go ahead into settings and then again disable the uh, mirroring display. I'll go back to clean feed so I can just see the camera. But that is my next big boost because now we're not streaming the good quality video from the iPhone 15 over the Wi-Fi network. Now we're pulling it through a physical connection which is gonna increase the quality by a ton. And as a review, here is the screenshot from the webcam. Then here's the screenshot from the iPhone over Wi-Fi. And now the recorder 3G. And this looks so much better because it's not a wireless connection from the camera to the Zoom call. So if you are a gamer, then either of these same techniques can be used to capture reactions over gameplay from the program OBS. So for my third idea, many of you are familiar with ProPresenter and you're gonna know exactly where I'm going with this when I say the word stage displays. So I currently serve as the production director at a church in Canton, Ohio. I lead the teams that make the sound, graphics, streaming, all of the production, audio production happen on Sundays and then throughout our facility. So ProPresenter 7 is a worship presentation software that our church uses and I've created a ton of videos on this topic. One advantage of ProPresenter 7 versus PowerPoint, for example, is that ProPresenter 7 can generate multiple outputs of the same content, but in different ways. So one output is the stage display for the band. This gives them the current slide text and the next slide text during a song. So I actually have a resource on a side note, I have a resource for ProPresenter 7 called the Pro 7 template available at crazyamazingdesigns.com. This template contains a bunch of pre-built content inside of your ProPresenter 7 interface, themes, looks, macros. My goal with this was to set a bunch of stuff up so that you don't have to and get you up and running in just a couple of minutes. So the stage display is also called a confidence monitor used for anyone on stage. So with your iPhone or an Android, there is an app called the Stage app. So I can go ahead and click on it right here, the Stage app, and now I'm gonna be able to see my instance of the Stage app from the ProPresenter running on my computer. So just to be clear here, ProPresenter runs on a computer, Mac or PC, and then the app connects to that computer. So if you go up to ProPresenter, settings in the top left, go down to network, we can now make sure a couple of things are enabled, okay? So when you go to the network tab, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your network is enabled, and now you're gonna to wanna to make now you're gonna to wanna make sure that your stage app is also enabled, and you're gonna to wanna to set a password. Let's just do three zeros. Close out of this, and now when you reload the stage app, you should see 
the per presenter instance on your computer. So now when I click on it, I'll just type in the password, three zeros. I'm gonna go ahead and clear per presenter real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now once it sees it and pulls it up, our stage display should come up. So now if I click on some slides, you can see our, our current slide text and our next slide text and the right beside it is our notes for our current and next slide. So we usually put chords and things like that. And you can put anything in a stage display. So a couple things to note, if you highlight it like this, uh, you can tell it to follow the stage display. So if I do that, I can see, I can, it'll follow whatever per presenter is doing. So I'll just follow stage screen one and that's gonna be our output to our team so if we change the stage display layout, that's the output we're gonna change. So that's where this is gonna follow. So that's really cool. I think that's a good summary of the iPhone app. And you're probably wondering why am I mentioning this? And I'm mentioning this because you can utilize this app to output HDMI to a TV in a pinch. So in a pinch, this is awesome. Maybe you do a mobile church setup and you have an iPhone connected to the stage display screen that setup is much more convenient than having an SDI cable run to the TV every week. I would not rely on this technique for a permanent setup, but in a pinch, it's great to see if you like the stage display in a specific location. This is really a great option. I love when technology gives us options. A couple of summers ago, I was leading in a church and we had our phones open, mounted right to our uh, microphone stands and we had our stage display app right on there so we could see it. It was so much more convenient than setting up a TV every single week. So iPhone, stage display, pro presenter, fantastic. SSD recording might be the big one that you've been waiting for. I was talking about the Blackmagic camera app before and this thing is amazing. I just love all the features and functionality it gives me. So many wonderful options built into a single app but the ability to set the media recording destination with the files menu means that we can record straight to an SSD drive from the app, even Apple Log HDR, which means we can color grade and post. So I've been recording my YouTube videos here in a vertical format here in the studio and then using that content as shorts with my iPhone and it works really well. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube that are gonna show you how this app works, but just for a quick summary, I have an SSD drive here it's a SanDisk drive, and then I have a SATA cable to USB-C. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it into here. And now it's gonna find it. So now I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna go to media. I'm gonna go to save clips to, it's currently set to in-app only. We're gonna go to files, and then I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna click on the SSD drive. So there it is, I clicked on it and now it's gonna record everything to it. And now you can see in the bottom middle when I go back to the camera, you can see that it shows me that there's a whole bunch of recording time left because, well, it's a massive SSD drive, so there's lots of time remaining. The default functionality of this app and the SSD drive setup is when I unplug the SSD, it's gonna to default to recording the videos internally and then we can go ahead and transfer them if you need to do that. Sometimes it's easier to just record them internally, especially if you bought the really big iPhone, and then re transfer them to my MacBook. So to do that, let me just go ahead and unplug this device and I'll plug in my phone to the MacBook. And now I will go to Finder. So now you can see that it brought up my locations and it'll bring up files and things here. Now I can go over to files and then the Blackmagic camera app is right here and we can go ahead and grab the media folder and we can just tr copy it over to my computer. And it'll show you the size and that's the easiest way to drag and transfer files over to your computer, just drag and drop that media folder. Okay, well, I think that's everything there is to cover about the iPhone and using it as a tool for live production. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, check out my other videos on live sound and streaming audio with the Behringer X32. I also do training on ProPresenter 7 if you're looking to up your game with a presentation software that offers much more flexibility. I'm Nathan and I will see you in the next one. Bye.